Gardner released its findings around their hype cycle for emerging technologies. Now this is composed of 29 must watch technologies and five key emerging trends. Uh, some great information for CIOs and tech leaders alike. So Brian Burke, uh, Research VP with Gartner, is here with us today to talk about this and to break it all down for us, Brian. So uh, there's a lot of information in these findings here. So just start first uh, with the hype cycle in general and uh, the information that you guys want to put out there. Okay. Well, let me tell you, good morning, first of all, Karen. Uh, and, uh, let me say thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to chat. Um, the hype cycle for emerging technologies is one of the key hype cycles that Gartner produces. And just to give you an idea of what a hype cycle is, uh, it's really how we track technologies that are emerging in the marketplace and how those technologies are evolving based on the hype that they're seeing in the press. So we have technologies that are introduced, uh, often in, in the labs, um, and uh, the press gets very excited about them. Uh, we see some uh, use cases for those technologies, some early successes, and typically, you know, as the uh, technology is being overhyped, as it's going up uh, to the peak of inflated expectations, this is typically where a technology, you know, is presumed to be able to sing and dance and wash the floors. Um, but then, you know, we find out that um, the technology isn't actually useful for all those things. Can't sing, can't dance, only wash the floors and it goes into the trough of disillusionment. Um, and then um, once we find out what are the actual use cases, how a technology can be applied and can be applied consistent, uh, consistently, we move up to the plateau of productivity as organizations start to apply those technologies in a repeatable way. So that's the hype cycles and that's how they work. It's a method we've used for more than a dozen years to track technologies as they go through their life cycles. Yeah, it's interesting. There's always things uh, that we have such great expectations for, Brian, and they didn't always turn out the way that uh, we may hope. And then sometimes things come out in a very different way and it can be a, a good thing. So break them, some of this down for us here, starting with the, the uh, technology, the trends that you really see people are going to be excited about and, and have great potential. Well, as we put together the hype cycle for emerging technologies, um, and just to mention, this is an aggregation of all of the technologies that we're tracking at Gardner. That's more than 2,000 trends and technologies. Um, and so we're aggregating what we believe are the most impactful for organizations over the next five to 10 years. And that's how we uh, put together the hype cycle for emerging technologies, one of 120 hype cycles that we put together. And as we aggregated these technologies into the hype cycle for emerging technologies, we saw that there was five key trends that were emerging uh, that we wanted to highlight. And so those are um, advanced artificial intelligence and analytics, which of course we're hearing a lot about um, how artificial intelligence is being applied to virtually everything these days. Um, augmented humans, which is really about how um, technology is augmenting humans uh, both cognitively um, and physically uh, and how, how those technologies are evolving. Digital ecosystems uh, is really about how business ecosystems, which clearly have existed for a long time, are becoming more digital, which is reducing friction um, in those eco ecosystems. So exchanging with our partners, customers, suppliers, uh, and those kinds of things. Uh, the next trend is post-classical uh, communications and compute, which is really an advancement in technology, and it's a step change advancement. So we've had Moore's Law for 30 years uh, that has predicted improvements in uh, technologies. Um, and what we're seeing is really a step change in how technologies are improving. We're highlighting some of those. And finally, sensing and mobility. Um, sensing and mobility is, has a lot to do with things like uh, drones and autonomous vehicles and those kinds of things, where it's the underlying technologies that are enabling those are around um, sensing the environment, uh, managing, movement in that environment, um, manipulating objects in that, that environment, and that's using some of the same core underlying technologies. So talk a little bit, Brian, about you know the fears uh, a lot of people have, and, and for good reason, uh, uh, for some when it comes to uh, artificial intelligence, uh, the impact on the workforce, and how things may or may not change for us humans. Well, you know, there is certainly a lot of fear uh, out there around artificial intelligence. 
and it's going to have an impact. <clears throat> but I think that people uh, misinterpret the impact that it's going to have. Um, so one of the trends that we talk about is augmented intelligence. And in augmented intelligence, what we're really seeing is that we've got a human-centric approach to how artificial intelligence is going to be applied. Artificial intelligence today is useful for very narrow task-based um, kinds of work. And so uh, what we see is that artificial intelligence is going to be used for task automation, um, but it's not going to be used for job automation. Um, and so we're not going to see uh, people so much displaced from the workforce. Uh, what we'll see is the shift from uh, tasks to particularly re repetitive tasks where they're going to be done more by uh, computers and robots and things like that. Um, and that'll free up time for the humans in the loop uh, to provide the more creative uh, thinking that's required uh, for those uh, for those jobs. So I think it is important to, to recognize that um, artificial intelligence is going to have a significant impact, um, but it's not going to uh, directly displace jobs. Uh, it, it will augment people in jobs and free up their time to do uh, more interesting things than the repetitive tasks of doing it today. Yeah, and you know, Brian, uh, one of the things we were talking about uh, here just a few minutes ago before we started recording this is uh, deep fakes. And we hear so much about that and in the news and, and people don't really understand uh, the technology that's actually behind it and what else it can do. So talk a little bit more about that for us. Okay, well, the technology behind deep fakes um, is called generative adversarial networks. And basically a generative adversarial network is uh, two algorithms that are dueling. So we have a generator um, and a generator is an algorithm that generates something. Um, so what in, in the case of uh, deep fakes and, and images, it's generating, let's say a person that doesn't exist. The discriminator then evaluates that generated image and says, does this look like a real person or not? That goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until uh, the generator generates an image that the discriminator can't determine is not a real person if we're looking at, at those cases. And so that's the basic technology behind that. And so there's been a lot of you know, fear and uncertainty and doubt around uh, deep fakes and how they're going to in influence politics uh, and those kinds of things. Um, and those you know, are, are real fears, uh, but I think that it's important that we also look at what are the potential positive commercial impacts uh, for these technologies, because at its core, um, if you have a, an algorithm that can generate something, something novel uh, based on um, what it knows about say what, uh, what a cat looks like, what a dog looks like, what a person looks like, it can also generate something novel or something useful. Uh, so generate novel, uh, novel marketing copy, for example, or generate synthetic data. So that's data that appears like real data, uh, but because it's synthetic data, it's generated, uh, there's no risk of um, having personal information lost. Or um, we can generate things like uh, drug compounds, pharmaceuticals, uh, to you know, target specific uh, diseases. And so there are tremendous implications uh, for generative adversarial networks. Right now, unfortunately, all the press is around deep fakes, um, and I understand why, uh, but I think that there's tremendous opportunities to leverage, leverage this technology uh, for good and commercial purposes. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't always hear the positive, right? The, the good stuff uh, on the other side of it. It's just the negative uh, that we tend to focus on. So, Brian, before we let you go here, um, anything here in this list that you especially are excited about or really interested in, uh, you know, what we're looking forward to? Well, I think that one of the things that, one of the technologies that I'm personally excited about uh, is called low Earth orbit satellites. Now, low Earth orbit satellites, LEO satellites, um, are different in that they, they are uh, in very close to the Earth as opposed to the fixed stationary satellites that we have today. Um, and that has a couple of advantages. Um, so one of the advantages is that uh, it will um, enable high-speed uh, data transfers uh, with low latency. So that is going to enable us to um, have alternative communications 
uh, particularly in remote areas, for things like real-time operation of drones and those kinds of things. But actually, what I'm more personally excited about um, is that right now, 48% uh, of the homes in the world uh, do not have adequate access or do not have access uh, to the internet. Um, and what low Earth orbit satellites uh, promise to provide um, is global internet coverage um, at a reasonable price and of course with low latency. So, it, you know, as fast as broadband. Um, and so I'm personally excited about um, opening up this uh, digital virtual world uh, that we all live in uh, to the other 48% of the world that doesn't have uh, cost effective access to it today. No, most certainly. Better connectivity uh, for everyone. That's good news. Uh, Brian, we certainly appreciate you being with us here today. And if you want to learn more about uh, Gartner's findings, make sure you stay with Tech Republic.